welcome to NEK TV Rocks, BT Rocks, sorry. Um, my guests today are Vic Representative Vicky Strong and Newport Ca City Council member Julia Raboyne. 50.8% of the population is female, and yet only 41% of representatives in Vermont are female, 19% in the whole of the USA at Congress, and Julie is only the sixth female member of the City Council. Which makes 25%. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is really sad. <laughs> but you're a current 25%, not an ongoing 25%. Correct. And there have only been six in the whole of the century mm -hmm. of Newport City Council. Why is that? And well, what can we do about it? <laughs> well, that's a good question, given um, the, the number of, of women who are really engaged in mm -hmm. their community and um, take an active interest in, um, in the world that their kids mm -hmm. are growing up in and, and the world that they're participating in, the workforce, and um, just, just going about their daily lives. I think, I think it's more difficult for women to get into local politics or state politics or certainly national politics because even in this modern age, women still uh, fulfill most of the responsibilities of the household duties mm -hmm. and the child rearing and it's really difficult to have the time and the ability to add something else to your daily life. I know I work full-time mm -hmm. um, much of my adult life I've been a single parent and so thinking about adding politics on top of that has right. been impossible. Now that my kids are older and um, I'm, I almost have an empty nest now I have the time to be able to to mm -hmm. devote to thinking about being that civically engaged. Right. But you, Vicki? I think my story is similar to Julie's um, in that being the caregiver, the nurturer of the family, pouring your life and energy into your children and um, your household activities, I didn't even consider um, running for office till my kids had, were grown. Mm -hmm. And then when I threw myself into that role, um, it was rather overwhelming and daunting. And, in, and I, in my own mind, thought traditionally it's a man's role. So when I stepped up to run for office, I'm, I felt somewhat like a fish out of water. Um, but I'm also very competitive, and, <laughs> and I have a passion for people and for serving, and it's another way to serve my country, my mm -hmm. state, my constituents, and, um, and I loved it as soon as I started. Yeah. Did both of you feel that it was traditionally a role for men? Yes, I did for sure. Yeah, definitely. As much as I feel that it should be changing, it's it's daunting to step into that arena mm -hmm. where, uh, for me, there are no women or were no women on the right. city council. It had been, I think, over a decade since a woman had served on city council. Mm -hmm. So just anticipating the social pressure of not being um, considered normal to want mm -hmm. to have that mm -hmm. role and to, to be the fish out of water, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it creates another barrier. Right. How do we change that so that the girls who are five, six, seven, mm -hmm. going into high school, how do they see this as a world that's open to them? Mm -hmm. And that they're important in it, right. really important. When, when I've had school children come into the State House, quite often we'll have a busload of kids come mm -hmm. from the area. I always encourage the whole entire class, the boys and girls, I'm serving in a place where I never thought I'd be. It was a dream. Um, that happened because of not only my desire to do it and hard work, but because I could believe I could do it. Right. And so I tell those children, think big. You know, where do you want to be someday? Do you want to serve and serve your country, serve your state in, in a role like this? It's very possible. And so try to give them that dream to mm -hmm. begin with, that hope or that desire. I think it's that. And also, we need to be intentional about changing our language. So much of our, our language in general, and especially in politics, mm -hmm. are male-centric, right. council men. Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's just typically a lot of... The chairman. Yeah. Chairman, <laughs> yes, thank you. I was <laughs> struggling for that word. <laughs> and I think being intentional, intentional about changing that language and also specifically encouraging girls and, and women to think about the, the gender differences and how men are so encouraged to step up and take a leadership role and that's considered normal and natural for them. Right. Whereas women typically 
especially in politics, think, well, you know, I had to train for this or get a certificate to be that, and I'm just not qualified <laughs> to run for office mm -hmm. because there is no certification mm -hmm. right. or real training right. program. Yes. So to, to point that out and say to women, you are qualified mm -hmm. just by mm -hmm. being interested in a registered voter and right. engaged in your community and having the passion. Mm -hmm. That is what makes you qualified. And having a perspective. Yes, yes, a very different perspective yeah. generally mm -hmm. than a man. I appreciate your saying that because even now after seven years in the legislature, I still feel because I'm a woman, I'm less smart <laughs> than the men. <laughs> And it's so not true. <laughs> I yeah. Just, I just feel automatically. I don't know as much. I can't think as clearly. I can't be as articulate. And that's just ingrained in my mind. Mm -hmm. It's not right. reality. Right. Exactly. So I always try to work harder. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. Go that extra mile and spend more time learning and trying to assimilate. And even still, I feel like I'm a step below. I put that on myself. I don't feel like they've done that to me. But I feel mm -hmm. like me personally, I do mm -hmm. that. And I think it's just the way of our culture, yeah. and we need to <laughs> shift that. And I'm, I'm yeah. glad you said that, because mm -hmm. it, I think that is so typical mm -hmm. of women who are striving to get ahead in the, in the workforce and, right. and to step into that political arena. And mm -hmm. after seven years, you said? Yeah, I still feel like right. I'm, I'm dumb. <laughs> wow. You know, like, like I'm reading a bell. I think I understand it, but to get up and articulate it, I hear men get up and say things that I still feel like, I, w I think maybe women think differently. I want to put it in plain yes. language. Mm -hmm. Here's what this bill says, you know, here's what it's about. Yes. Whereas they're talking about the nitty gritty and details that sometimes are, we can't even comprehend the mo most average people. Mm -hmm. So that tends to make me feel like I'm dumb or something, it's just because like I want to know the meat of it. What's this about? Isn't that interesting? Because yeah. even though I'm a new city council person, mm -hmm. I have felt that exact same way sitting <laughs> at the table of having something brought before the council and mm -hmm. me wanting to translate it. Right. Like, what does this really mean right. for us? Yeah. And it feels like it's unwelcome. Uh, yes. And sitting and watching city council, and I have watched mm -hmm. in Montpelier, I see that happen. Mm -hmm. I see when Julie has asked questions, I've seen when other women have asked questions, they get put down in a pretty condescending way or yes. just dismissed mm -hmm. or talked over. Right. Which is so habitual mm -hmm. and it's really hard to change that. But I've watched Julie particularly ask very direct and very mm -hmm. clarifying questions right. that sort of silence the room mm -hmm. <laughs> and then get glossed over. <laughs> right. It's really interesting. Yeah, and there's been times where I felt like if a man had asked those same questions, mm -hmm. that question would have been answered yes. and addressed directly, whereas it seems to be fine for, when I ask it, to just be yeah. ignored. Mm -hmm. And right. you see the same thing with comments from the floor. Mm -hmm. If a man asks a question, mm -hmm. it's responded to, mm -hmm. and a man is allowed to, allowed to talk on. Women get silenced. Hmm. And clearly that's both of your experiences in mm. the world, too. Mm. Yeah, I feel like we have to work harder. <laughs> yeah, and we shouldn't. We should have to work equally as hard as men. I yes. Mm -hmm. And I think also um, one of the issues is that as women, we're taught to be soft and demure and not make waves. Sweet. Right. And sweet. That's Sugar true. and spice. Yes. And so mm -hmm. where we can see a man stand up on the, the mm -hmm. floor of the house right. and be really powerful and direct yes. and what people would call strong mm -hmm. and um, firm, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you say the same thing, you right. might be perceived as a bully or yeah. really over the top and mm -hmm. harsh yes. and maybe even mm -hmm. the B word. Yes, Which I, I was thinking of that. <laughs> and there's a couple of other words that get applied to women. Right. There's assumptions made about women's sexuality, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. if they're seen to be assertive. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of mind blowing. You're mean, welcome to 2017. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. How do we change it? You both have daughters. Right. How are your daughters <coughs> going to be able to mm -hmm. do it differently? Mm -hmm. How are your granddaughters going to be yeah. able to? It's interesting when you mention that for us to be thinking, because uh, my daughter is in a leadership role, and she's almost in a way my um, my hero, because I watch her as her, she's 30, in her 30s, and she stands up in public, she's very assertive, she teaches, um, leads conferences, mm -hmm. and um, ministers to many people in her age group, and I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of amazed, because at that age, I was <laughs> changing diapers and mm -hmm. had no vision for myself, 
and in fact lost my my identity I think and and that's mm-hmm. not to put down motherhood I love right. motherhood but one of the roles I've taken on um, in the last few years is affirming women in their roles not only in motherhood but as they see beyond motherhood as mm-hmm. you're facing that empty nest we have a whole world ahead of us right many many years of service and ways to fill roles so I think is where mothers in training and teaching our children somehow my daughter got that assimilated that she she's valuable she has a lot to offer and she gives that freely and in her role and does it without fear so I think I think helping our girls know um, they're valuable and they have a great purpose for their life and to mm-hmm. step up and do that without fear mm-hmm. I know my daughter who's 20 Mm -hmm. and lives out of the area now, um, she often, as an adult, of course, not when she was a teenager, Mm -hmm. (laughs) tells me how much of a role model I am to her um, with my community activism and my being in the, or my willingness to step up and serve Mm -hmm. on the city council. And she indicates that my my voice throughout her growing up life, Mm -hmm. where I've been fighting against this or that or the the system how it treats women or or families Mm -hmm. or single mothers or people in poverty Um, she's seen me fight against that and advocate and she she definitely understands that that's not the norm and appreciates the example I set for her and and absolutely I mean she is the one strong powerful (laughs) upcoming woman It's great. It mm-hmm. is great. She's, yes. she's a delight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what resources are there out there to help girls and young women who may not get that kind of modeling at mm. home, who probably are not getting it in their schools, although I'd like to think that they are, but they're probably not, mm-hmm. and who find it hard to find in their communities? Are there any resources? I guess they'd have to look to people in the public eye. What would you say, Julie, seeing people be the example? Well, um, I had the opportunity to engage in a training program in 2013 and 2014. It was the inaugural year of the Emerge program, Mm -hmm. which is a training ground for Democratic women. So I think there are um, training programs coming up like that that are either partisan Mm -hmm. or could be more universal for Mm -hmm. for any woman looking to engage Mm -hmm. in in activism Mm -hmm. Um, just yesterday i i got a an email blast from jane sanders i got that too and i i don't remember what it was called but it's a new um some kind of college or online training thing to educate people in general Mm -hmm. about what's happening in in the state in the country in the world Mm -hmm. I think what, about, what about the Aspire program um, here mm-hmm. in Newport? Yeah, that, that's not so much politically. That's about small businesses, right. and that's great. I yes. know. I was thinking of women as entrepreneurs, yeah. mm-hmm. starting their own business. Even that is daunting is. sometimes, yes. and to be able to step up and, and start a business and hire more women in. Yeah. Um, Particularly as women don't get loans in the same way that men do, mm. because they're not seen as a good risk. Hmm. Hmm. And there's a lot of statistics and evidence to back that. Right. Uh, equally, th- if you look at the hierarchy, it's white men, mm-hmm. probably then white women, and then people of color who find it even harder to get loans mm-hmm. because the system's rigged, mm-hmm. which is really sad. Would you say in Vermont that we're more of a leader in a lot of these things? Yes. Um, because when you mention statistics in the legislature. 41%, which is wonderful. It is pretty high. It's amazing. Yeah. And then on my way in today and for the show, I was thinking, how many women are the chairperson of the committee? Mm-hmm. Right. And there's seven women out of 11, uh, 12. So there are actually more women chairpersons than yeah. men. And our Speaker of the House is a woman. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the leadership on the Democratic side, um, pretty much all women, a, a couple men. But you'll see women more in leadership roles <laughs> there. Mm-hmm. How about on the Republican side? Um, you know, th- we're kind of slow on the uptake <laughs> on that. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that's bad necessarily, yeah. just men step up and do it. But um, we are getting more women involved. Good. And in kind of actually encouraging them. The men there are saying, we want you to be in leadership. Please come. Um, we're trying to get some women who will do some of those leadership roles. So we're getting there. Um, but in our state house, there's a tremendous amount of women leadership. Mm-hmm. 
which I think is a little unusual in the country, a little more so. Yes. Yeah, I think we are pretty progressive on that front. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think um, nationwide there's a lot of effort going into changing the media, the mm -hmm. way the media reports on women in politics. Yes. Um, years ago, or actually not that many years ago, it was very <laughs> typical for when a, a man is in the public eye, um, in the political arena, it'll be reported on what he says, what he does, what mm -hmm. his positions are. Whereas a woman in that same role, it'll be about what does her hair look like? What is <laughs> what she, is she wearing? wearing? <laughs> Who designed her dress? And, oh, and glosses dear. over her positions and yeah. what she says. Yeah. Well, and well. I, I know there's been a lot of work nationwide yes. to change that, to mm -hmm. educate the media on reporting yes. equally. And right. I, I think that's really important yes. going forward. It mm -hmm. certainly is. Mm -hmm. And it's so bizarre that that's considered what's important. Mm -hmm. And to whom? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And what is the message that that gives? Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, one thing my daughter has been very outspoken about is that uh, the media uses women to portray their products. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And very often in a sexual um, yep inappropriate way. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean anything from, you know, buying clothes to a cup of coffee, <coughs> excuse me, exploiting women, I believe, mm -hmm. and um, sexualizing it. And I think it's become such in our culture that now we almost don't even notice it. It's just right. assumed that that's, a, you know, acceptable. Mm -hmm. So she stepped up a lot and um, been doing things to protest that and make women <laughs> not be seen in that light. Like it's, it, a woman's used to sell a cup of coffee just because she's holding it and looks sexually attractive. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> um, but I think that's something we have to stand up and fight yeah. for as women, not to be portrayed like that. Yeah. There are some wonderful ads where the, the roles have been switched. Mm -hmm. So there's women in the traditionally male role and men being draped across car hoods <laughs> or <laughs> wearing just lacy underwear. <laughs> it's really funny, but it does make the point. And yet, why do we normalize that for right. women? We should. What's the message that right. says? That's, that's sad for the young yeah. girls, I think. Yeah, and it, I think it also gives the message that in order to be in a public eye, mm -hmm. you have to be attractive yes. and dress mm -hmm. just so and right. have, you, have your makeup just so. <laughs> Weigh just so much or yes, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yes, and be physically almost perfect, where yeah. I don't think men feel that pressure Not at all. all. At least <laughs> I don't see it. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they do. I guess I don't usually ask that as a question. <laughs> right. Maybe we should ask that. <laughs> or maybe we should stop asking it altogether. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I see the role that we can have as leaders to value mm -hmm. women uh, mm -hmm. and, and give them um, dignity, identity, and whatever their strengths are to right. use those publicly. Um, so one of the roles, another role I have as a Weight Watcher leader is helping women to see themselves as worthy of respect, of self-worth in the sense of taking care of themselves. Mm -hmm and um, doing things for them. We're such caregivers and nurturers yeah. that it's okay, you know, buy yourself that special outfit or those fruits and vegetables you <laughs> love or whatever it is, take mm -hmm. that part-time job or take that class. Mm -hmm. um, to encourage women to do that is, mm -hmm. is, I think, a great step for us to each find our role and do it with, with self-worth. Yeah. yeah, definitely. We're so um, trained, it's so ingrained to put ourselves last. Yeah, yes. that everything else comes first. Absolutely. Whether it's if if we have children, it's our children. It's our spouse if we have one. It's <laughs> our job. It's right. Everything else, and we come last. Mm -hmm. And I don't think men feel that kind of pressure at all. Right. And so if we can create, uh, or at least move our culture toward mm -hmm. having that equality of mm -hmm. being able to take care of ourselves mm -hmm. and strive for things and. Mm -hmm. It's not selfish. That's, right. It's, it's not selfish. Took right. me a long time to learn that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very long time. And um, and when I see women start to take those steps, it's it's very slow sometimes mm -hmm. that change. Yeah. Because we don't get enough sleep. You know, it's everything. Yeah. We're trying to do everything right. all day long. <laughs> and do it better. <laughs> I know. Which is crazy. That's crazy pressure. It is. It really is, and I think it even sometimes creates some competition that, between women. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it. It naturally seems like mm -hmm. women would be each other's biggest supports right. and, and I've found that it, that's not always the case right. yeah. and I, I don't really understand those dynamics um, but 
it's something that I notice and pay attention mm -hmm. to and, and I go, try to go out of my way to yeah. support other women and encourage other women. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad to hear you. That's yes. certainly that. yes. true in business and in mm -hmm. things like the legal profession. Mm -hmm. That it's, it's much harder for the women to support other women mm -hmm. than it is for the men to support each other. They may be competitive too, mm -hmm. but they're the ones who are pushing the other men into prominent positions. Mm. And that doesn't seem to happen so much with women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's because those positions are looked at as so scarce for women Probably. that it's dog eat dog. If I encourage you, then maybe I'm not going to move forward. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there should be room for all of us right. at the table. Yes, yes. we're working together. Mm -hmm. We would hope. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not competing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does sort of emphasize the need for women's space and for women's gathering places where they can be supportive of each other. Yes. Professional organizations, exactly. or women's caucus, or, or whatever words we choose to use. Right. But men have that sort of built into their history. Mm -hmm. We don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to seek it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are some, I mean, and I know that a lot of the, quote, male-only organizations have now had to at least open their doors in theory, mm -hmm. but they don't have to make it welcoming. Right. And we didn't even have that as a baseline. Mm -hmm. And how do, how do we address that? How can we do that locally? Right. Well, I, th I think... Men have had the opportunity to support each other and have their secret meetings for yes. for centuries, whereas women have only had the right to vote in the U.S. for less than a hundred <laughs> years. Isn't that mm -hmm. insane? It is insane, and and yet even though it's been less than a century, it feels like that's become such ancient history that we don't even notice it anymore right. that disparity between men's rights and, and mm -hmm. women's rights throughout history it's like it's already forgotten mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I wish that we could emphasize that history more toward to girls and women mm -hmm. and men and <laughs> and point out that inequity mm -hmm. and and make that a, a driving force yeah. toward having people be greater activists and paying more attention to creating that space for women mm -hmm. to support each other or even men to support women and vice versa mm -hmm. to just strive toward equality yeah i was going to say that our culture over those hundred years has changed dramatically yes our our little church in little downtown albany we've lost all that older generation mm -hmm. of those women who work on farms mm -hmm didn't have the extra pressure of that breadwinner kind of thing and so they came together often just mm -hmm. church suppers mm -hmm. bible studies all these little yeah. things and um and that was their support you know to argue and bicker over how your pickles yeah. came out and <laughs> how do we make this chicken pie and mm -hmm. um and support each other and so when we see our culture just being kind of not that same core that it used to have i think you have to intentionally make it happen yeah uh, like intentionally have ladies groups um and do things together and that kind of thing. Is there a women's caucus? You know, that's an interesting question because someone had mentioned that even a couple of years ago and it just never went anywhere. Yeah. Um, so there is not right now either any party that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a good idea. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly something that that 41% of women could mm -hmm. do for oh. the rest of Vermont. I did happen to think there is one group in the State House, a women's caucus, that meets once a week it's kind of a small group right now but they talk about um, all kinds of issues and bring in speakers but it hasn't grown very much but it, it is a little core group and it's a nonpartisan group yeah which is mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's so interesting because technically you two represent different sides of a political spectrum mm -hmm. but here you are saying exactly the same I things. know <laughs> it's right <laughs> it's not about what divides us it's about what brings us together right and I think that's that's what makes Vermont a little bit unique or at least mm -hmm. in the Northeast Kingdom that even as different political parties we have so much that we share as yeah. like our values and our beliefs our and love of our community yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the best we have the best interests of our community at heart I think yes yes mm -hmm. I I hope in Montpelier it's not as partisan as it is in uh, <laughs> national politics <laughs> I would hope not it's so different just because um, it's a citizens' legislature. People from mm -hmm. the public come in. You've both been in there. You oh, can address times. anyone there. Yeah. You'll see the governor walk by. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, we're very approachable people, and I think that brings a measure of accountability that yes. doesn't happen in Washington. 
Mm -hmm. And so with the public in there, we're accessible at all times. We don't make a big salary. We're not mm -hmm. there for the money. <laughs> um, it's, it's about our people, our, our state. Mm -hmm. Are your salaries equal? Just out of curiosity. Um, I believe so. Um, both House and Senate we're just paid a minimal salary um, during the work week when we're actually there and mm -hmm. meet in session. So that's four months. And then um, we do have um, driving uh, gas yeah. stipends and meals. And it's not gender no. dependent. It's just one thing for everybody, nice. same thing. Men, yeah. women, both House and Senate. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, none of us have a desk or a secretary. Mm -hmm. Right. We get a locker. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's pretty grassroots down to earth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a good way of being, mm -hmm. and it works for Vermont. Right. And you, yeah. right. Wouldn't it be nice if the rest of the USA could learn from that? I know. I do love that about Vermont's legislature. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, it, it, it does make it difficult for people who are younger and need yes. to work full time they to can't, serve. They can't afford yes. it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's one downside. It is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's usually more retired people or someone who has a part-time job and can fit this in and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Or works from home. Because you have right. had younger representatives. Yes, we have a few. Right. Yeah. More now than before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So somehow they're finding ways of making it work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And city council, of course, meets at night. <laughs> <laughs> it does, but even, even that, I, I think there's... Um, it's much more easy. It's easier for somebody who's retired to serve in that role. Mm -hmm. I know when I was considering um, throwing my hat in the ring to be on city council, the um, kind of the job description said you have to have available, I think it was between 8 and 12 hours per week. Huh. That's a lot. It is, it's a, lot. It is. It's a volunteer position. And as you know, you don't get a lot of thanks, and mostly <laughs> people are going to say, why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? And your <laughs> head starts to go around in circles, and right. you're doing the best you can. And mm -hmm. I hope you get enough appreciation just for having stepped up to do that job, because it's going to be never-ending the amount of, you know, problems. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, for those of us sitting in the peanut gallery yeah. it's, it's <laughs> wonderful having new energy new representatives mm -hmm. in on the council mm -hmm. but we're all there pounding about change too, right. and sometimes that must be really hard it is hard. and we're still really glad that you volunteered <laughs> yes. and that james did too well for me i'm so new at it that i'm i feel like i'm still observing the dynamics mm -hmm. and and i I, b having been in the peanut gallery yeah. for years <laughs> along with with everybody else I feel like I still have fully have that perspective yeah. of being in the peanut gallery mm -hmm. and I it's sometimes when I people are asking me questions about City Council I find that I'm thinking about it more from the peanut gallery side rather right. than being a council member and so I'm sure that's going to evolve over time but mm -hmm. yeah. I hope you never lose that side I hope yes it's really that's my hope as well we are just about out of time. Mm -hmm. Last thoughts. Mm -hmm. What can you say to young women who I hope are going to watch this? Because mm -hmm. this will get, sh it will be shown on NEK TV, mm -hmm. but it will also be circulated online. And mm -hmm. I want young women to see this. Mm -hmm. Schoolgirls, I was told by an eight year old the other day, and she said just so calmly, I'm going to be president. Oh, cool. <laughs> <That's> sweet. <laughs> How, what can you say that can encourage her and some of the others? Mm -hmm. I would say that as women, we're, we are all on a journey. And, and for me to be in the role I'm in now took many years of, of growing, you know, mm -hmm. things that I had to learn. Always be absorbing and learning and realize you can be anything you see out there, anything you dream of or want to be, you can do it. And just set your heart on it, work hard, and, and you can achieve it. And believe that you're valuable and worthy um, to fulfill any role in leadership because you're needed there bring your bring mm -hmm. your passion to it I think it's important that we not put too much pressure on girls and women to be in leadership roles because mm -hmm. that's not great for everybody that's right. not what everybody strives for so my advice would be to seek out what you want to do um, follow your passion it can be hard I think as women to to even identify what we're passionate mm -hmm. about and mm -hmm. to to keep your eye on that ball and keep your mind open to what you really want to do in life and then pursue that mm -hmm. whether it's a traditional 
career path mm-hmm. or woman's path or whether it is pie in the sky dreaming being president. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't have to be pie in the sky. It I mean, doesn't. That could be real. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And feel good about being a girl or a woman and mm-hmm. know that you're equally as good as any male. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And can go any f- further distance that you choose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're out of time. Mm-hmm. I love this topic. And at some point, I'd like to come back to it or a different aspect of it. Would that be okay with both of you? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's such a great discussion to mm-hmm. have. Thank you for coming today. Thank, Thank you for, for giving up us. your time. Thank you for having <laughs> us. It's been a pleasure.